Tomorrow night, we will count down to a new year and a whole new decade. The 2010s brought us monumental changes around the world. And tonight, Eric Sorensen looks back at the stories and events that shaped the past 10 years. I thought, my God, we can build a phone out of this. Steve Jobs' last interview began the decade in which phones got smarter, social media changed our lives, and climate changed our future. A decade that kicked off with contrasting global events. The catastrophic earthquake in Haiti that killed more than 200,000. Followed by Olympic celebration in Vancouver. The miraculous rescue of Chilean miners. And the optimism of the Arab Spring. Viva Tunisia! Viva Egypt! Viva every country looking for freedom! Ten years that launched this song to the top of the internet would, in fact, unfold in ways unimagined. This is the highest resolution phone screen ever. Smartphones weren't new, but in the 2010s put unlimited information and entertainment in the palm of your hand. Technology became personal and convenient. What's it like to look across the table right now and see your daughter texting during this interview? Oh, it's annoying. <laughs> Hours of every day devoted to screens of every size. A screen is a tool. It's not meant to be a toy. Self-expression revealed a culture that indeed wanted to be seen and wanted to be heard. We are marching for women, all women. It helped mobilize women to speak out. We will not go away. Me Too exposed sexual abuse and subjected powerful men and age-old attitudes to new accountability. But platforms to meet and share also became places to bully and spread prejudice. And almost everything we do online represents data that someone wants. We've gained sharing, we've lost privacy, not always willingly. Corporate technology giants became new and intimate partners in our lives, and apps filled our modern toolbox. Great disruptors emerged. Amazon transformed retail. Airbnb changed where we stay. Uber altered how we get around. And Netflix reshaped what we watch and when. Bricks and mortar shopping centers became a victim of modern commerce. Printed newspapers a casualty of modern communication. When the old ways go, so do the old jobs. Aging baby boomers counted on jobs for life. Now millennials face career paths deemed precarious. Millennial culture has also transformed music. Yeah, yeah, in the more and more female artists found their place at the top of the charts in the 2010s. Canada's Drake spearheaded rap's rise to the preeminent genre. And I know when but social media globalized new genres from Asia, a quirky hit song, and K-pop, such as South Korean boy band BTS, saw a meteoric rise. And from Latin America, Despacito became the most watched YouTube video of all time. Viewing habits began to keep us at home, to binge watch the new way to ingest entire series. <laughs> Disney, with franchises like Star Wars and The Avengers, still gave us reason to go see movies on the big screen. The Academy Awards, uh, otherwise known as the uh, White People's Choice Awards. There also came a point when Hollywood finally recognized the underrepresentation of people of color. But the biggest change was the culture shift to social media that happened before our very eyes. <laughs> the 2010s also forced us to open our eyes to the natural world. Experts have warned of global warming for decades. But in this decade, science began to overwhelm indifference. The five hottest years on record were the last five years. One study after another reported higher temperatures, melting sea ice, rising oceans, thawing permafrost, all releasing more carbon dioxide and methane into the atmosphere. This is the sleeping giant for the Earth's climate that's starting to wake up. International commitments were agreed to in Paris, limiting warming to an increase of no more than two degrees Celsius. Soon that was seen as inadequate. The consequences for nature and humanity are sweeping and severe. The upturn in catastrophic natural events is now widely accepted as evidence of global warming. 
like wildfires from California to Canada's boreal forest, including one that ravaged Fort McMurray, Alberta, are becoming more frequent. Greenhouse gases are being released from the burning Amazon, where much of the world's carbon dioxide is stored. Coastal communities are on the front lines of rising sea levels, hurricanes are dumping more water, and superstorms will only cause more damage. There is no more debate about whether climate change is real. Outright climate change denial began to disappear in the 2010s, but the politics of preserving fossil fuel economies did not. Canada, a microcosm of the world's divided priorities. Canadians supporting both carbon taxes and carbon producing pipelines. What is at stake is the world we leave for our children. It's not clear when nations will agree on the next urgent steps needed to combat climate change, but they did not get there in the 2010s. Hey, democracy. Social media became a new force in world affairs. Protest movements, but also governments, gained new powers to reach the people with propaganda and surveillance. Egypt and is running 24-hour coverage, demonizing the Muslim Brotherhood. Some dictators were overthrown, but much of the Middle East did not democratize. In Syria, the Arab Spring collapsed into civil war and untold suffering. Hundreds of thousands were killed, tens of millions displaced. A brutal regime held on to power. It's our decision. And a genocidal extremist group called ISIS unleashed inconceivable horrors as it and other terrorist groups enlisted willing recruits worldwide. And we will destroy you. Homegrown extremism spread hate inspired attacks around the world, killing innocent civilians in France, in the United Kingdom, and at the tomb of the unknown soldier in Ottawa, bringing terror to the halls of Parliament Hill. It was another decade with countless mass killings, from the Rohingya Muslims to American school children. Well, I heard like seven loud booms, and the gym teachers told us to go in the corner, so we all huddled. Mass migration spurred a humanitarian crisis in the Mediterranean, but also served as a backdrop to the growth of anti-immigration politics. God bless America! The Tea Party in America the National Front in France, the UK Independence Party, which helped bring Brexit. This means that the UK has voted to leave the European Union. The spread of democracy and liberalism in the 90s, it seems, was replaced by divisiveness this decade. Russia annexed Crimea. And Vladimir Putin's leadership increasingly resembled that of the old Soviet Union. China challenged the economic supremacy of the United States. But under Xi Jinping, suppression of dissent detention of the Uyghurs, and a crackdown in Hong Kong suggested an ascendant China blends economic freedom with political repression. And has any decade in the history of the United States seen a sharper swing in its politics and its stature in the world? This is the power of human dignity. From the first African-American president who stood for diversity and social justice and confronted traditional foes like Russia, Thank you very much. to a president who embraced Vladimir Putin and befriended authoritarian regimes, under whom race relations soured and attitudes towards immigrants hardened. And Mexico will pay for the wall. What to make of the Donald Trump era? You know, the path that this country has taken uh, has never been a straight line. We zig and zag. In contrast to much of the world, Canada stood as a bastion of moderation and diversity. Syrian refugees were welcomed, and even as others claimed asylum at our borders, anti-immigrant politics did not catch fire here. Without much ado, Canadians elected a conservative government, followed by a liberal government, as they have always done. There were tragedies that broke our hearts. The harrowing train disaster at Lac Megantic, the devastating bus crash near Humboldt, Saskatchewan, the nursing home fire in Lille Verte, Quebec, and the biggest killer of all, the opioid epidemic that quietly claimed 14,000 Canadian lives in the last four years. There were incomprehensible acts, the hate-inspired attack on worshippers at a Quebec mosque, the shooting of Mounties in New Brunswick, and the senseless attack on pedestrians with a van on a busy Toronto street. Still, Canada was a progressive voice in the world, legalizing physician-assisted death with dignity, and adding gender identity to the Human Rights Act. 
Transgender people have been waiting a long time for the same rights and protections the rest of us already have. And we became the world's first major economy to legalize pot. This country celebrated its 150th birthday, though for indigenous Canadians it is an arbitrary date for nationhood. A government commission addressed centuries of harm to indigenous people. I'd like to see things done in my lifetime. Still, another decade has passed with inequality and without full reconciliation. Yeah! It was a decade to celebrate sports. Over three Winter Olympics, Canada became a power in winter events. More women athletes attained global stature. The country became talent-laden in basketball and once again produced a generational superstar in the sport we call our own. And there was one championship that will long be remembered. Human achievement takes many forms. We have begun to edit human genomes in the fight against disease. We've witnessed human courage on the front lines against Ebola. And we saw the human spirit in the rescue of a Thai soccer team. And human curiosity is propelling our search deeper into space. We looked at our first black hole, discovered the Higgs boson particle and gravitational waves that help explain the physics of the cosmos, confirming theories 100 years after Einstein came up with them. We are go for final plunge. We searched for organic molecules in Saturn's orbit and found organic compounds on Mars. We brushed up close with Pluto and Voyager spacecraft bid farewell to our solar system. We have spotted distant planets not unlike our own, and it seems we've come to accept that we are not alone. Finding a second Earth is not just a matter of if, but when. Look at this, a tube. The space race has changed. Canada's most accomplished astronaut, Chris Hatfield, flew his final missions, as did the U.S. space shuttle program. Nose gear touchdown. China has gone to the moon. The Europeans sent a spacecraft to land on a comet, and NASA's OSIRIS-REx went to an asteroid and is bringing back samples. And Elon Musk's private company, SpaceX, is revolutionizing space transportation and doing it with reusable rockets. And the Falcons have landed. In time, the 2010s may be remembered as the decade when we realized the possibilities of personal technology in our lives, the vulnerabilities of the planet from our actions, and the limitations still of what we know about our universe. Eric Sorensen, Global News.